Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the NEC Overtime Pod. My name is Christopher Horton, and I am the Director of Creative Services at the NEC. For this episode of the podcast and Black History Month, we wanted to have a conversation about something that is special to a lot of us, especially as we, especially as the calendar turns over to March. Hoops. But for this conversation, we aren't talking about how to score or how to win over a 2-3 zone or even how to do a crossover. No, no. The only crossover that we're going to be able to do is talking about African-American culture, using our platforms and the intersectionality within the sport that we love. Today, I'm joined by three incredible panelists from around the league. And to get this all started, I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves and let us know how they fell in love with the game. Hey, uh, Patrick Sellers, the coach of Central Connecticut. Yeah, um, I played here back in the days. I'm considerably older than all of you guys on the call. And uh, then I went and played professionally in Europe for a few years, and I've been coaching college basketball for 22 years. Uh, coached a year in the pros in China. Uh, um, and the way I got started with basketball is my family. Basketball is big in my family. I have a number of cousins who played college basketball my brother played at UConn I had a cousin play at Syracuse New Mexico State um we had a huge family and we all were like a basketball family so uh, I got involved with it fell in love with it at a really early age and I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship and play at Central Connecticut and then I ended up playing professionally in Europe for a couple of years um and you know the next best thing if you can't play is coaching. And so I got involved with coaching after I, after I stopped playing and coaching ever since. So it's happy to be here. How you doing? I'm for Dre Hayward, current player at Wagner. And um, I'm first <coughs> the basketball uh, through family as well. Uh, my cousin was a big influence on me playing. And I started playing in middle school. Um, yeah, and I ended up at Wagner. So that's pretty much my story. Hi, I'm Samira Marsh, assistant women's basketball coach at Wagner. Um, I'm from the New York City area. And if anyone knows, it's a big, big basketball hotbed. Um, how I got started, uh, one of my dad's closest friends in the world is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They actually went to high school together at Power Memorial. Um, so I've been around the game of basketball my entire life, and it's just been a super influential on me. And so my start began following my brothers, and then I kind of took my own path into uh, playing at the collegiate level and now coaching. Uh, so this is actually my 14th season on the sideline, um, and I've enjoyed every year of it. Wow. So those are three completely original stories. That's incredible to hear. Um, so my first question for this group will be a broad one, but one that needs to be asked. Um, why is it so important to use the platform that being great at a sport can create to speak out against racism, injustice, or anything that that person feels the need to speak up against? Well, for me, it's because, you know, basketball is such a high profile sport and you're, you know, people see you all over the place. And now, again, like you guys are way younger. Social media and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and everything, you, you, you have people who follow you. And so you have a big influence. So I talk to our guys all the time about being on campus, you know, being in the community, you have such a, a positive influence on people. People want to be around good people. They want to be around athletes. They want to be around people who are outgoing and talkative and exciting. They want to be around it. So if you're sending a good message, if you're sending a good message, they want to hear that message. And part of you know us sharing our message and getting out there and, and using our platform is to talk about what's going on socially for people of color, uh, for everybody. And uh, you know, obviously the George Floyd thing hit home because people saw it right in their living rooms, you know, right there on, on video, what happened, a man lost his life. And it was, you know, it woke a lot of people up and it made people say, hey, man, we got to we got to call attention to this. We got to we got to let people know. So me being an older African-American male, I've been in situations, obviously, getting pulled over by cops and, you know, you know, having to answer certain questions or whatever. And when you were in the right, you weren't in the wrong. And I've shared my experiences with the players I've coached. And there's other groups, like kids I talk to in the community, I share my experiences, how I handled it, 
how I de-escalated the situation and how I can turn something that was a negative into a positive to help other people and, and to educate people. So, you know, basketball goes, it, it, you know, it goes so many places. Uh, Samara was talking about her, her, her dad and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I, that's, you can't get any bigger than that. So uh, we can use what we have as a group, as a community, as a culture to uh, kind of get it out there and talk about, you know, how we can make things better for our community and for everybody. Uh, I agree. I, I believe that uh, even as a player, like whether we want it or not, the spotlight is always on us and people always see what are we doing, how we react to things. And uh, we do have an influence on the community. And I think uh, being able to have that power and take it to the next level is important. Bringing, bringing attention to the uh, social injustice because yeah, uh, it was a, it was um, a movement, but it's still a lot of people out there that are not aware of the struggles and what African Americans have to go through on a daily. So I think having this platform as a player, as a coach, is important because again, a lot of people do look at like uh, look at uh, our beliefs, our interests, and they take that on that as a self because we have such an influence on the community. I think also all of us going from players uh, to coaches and Andrea may experience this same journey in her lifetime. So you carry with you uh, those experiences and those lessons your entire life. And then when you're in charge, you can say, um, instead of doing the wrong thing, I'm gonna try to do the right thing or the best thing um, when, when I have the opportunity at leadership. And so to use our platforms in a responsible way um, is great. Um, to speak to both Drea and Coach Sellers, having that influence because we're going from our communities um, to camps, to clinics, to the national tournament. So we're, we're touching a lot of people in a lot of places. And the more we can speak on things that matter to our people in our community, the better things can become and the better educated we all are. And I really think that that's the magical thing about sports is that you're influencing and you're entertaining and you're... Uh, inspiring so many people so if you can do all of that while playing a sport imagine what you can do when you're speaking about things that you and your uh, co uh community cares about i think it's a very uh impactful it's a very powerful stage at any level um that ties into my second question is that uh the nba has been at the forefront um especially with uh, investing resources into the, their own um, communities and justice. Um, the work that they've done, not only speaking out uh, against injustices, but endorsing policies and extracting real uh, money and uh, commitment from those teams to uh, put into causes that the actual players care um, about has really been inspiring to really see. My question for this group is, what can we take away from those successes at the highest level? And how can we apply that change to our conference? You know, uh, one of the big things, you know, remember back in the, when the NBA was in the bubble and it was like the big thing was getting everybody out to vote. And those guys made, those arenas voter registration places. So like their fans could go register to vote. And there's a lot of people who aren't registered to vote, which is unbelievable. And, you know, it's just, it's a lot of people of color. And so that's another thing that we can, you know, the NBA has such a big, powerful entity and millions and billions of dollars. We don't have that, but we do have a voice and we can talk and we can make things happen. So we could go get voter registration done at our at our gym and our gyms in the NEC. We can get we can get out. I I, uh, I was an assistant coach when when everything was going down in the bubble, and so I was at Fairfield. And there was out of our thirteen scholarship guys, and we had three walk ons. I want to say it was probably ten of the third, uh, ten of the sixteen were not registered to vote. So I got with those guys and we brought them in the office and they were different states, whatever. We got registrations. They all did their forms. They, they voted uh, absentee ballots. So like little things like that. If I, if I can get my 10, uh, Samara gets her 10, Drea gets her teammate, you know, whatever, we, whatever you can do, we can do our part uh, 
as a group, as a league. And it, obviously we don't have the billions of dollars that the NBA has, but we can make a dent into uh, what we need to do as a community. And, and, and that's just one thing, voter registration, but it's everything. It's uh, getting out as a coach and going to the local boys club and talking to the kids in the boys club. I was a, I was a boys club member when I was growing up. So I go to the, I have a special place in my boys and girls club have a special place in my heart for it. So I always get back to the Boys and Girls Club and talk to the kids about everything, about doing the right things in school, going to extra study hall, you know, get, get signing up for basketball camps whenever you can, or, you know, doing little things like that. So as a group, we can, we can look at what the NBA does and we might not be able to do it at, at a big grandiose scale, but we can do our part as a group. I agree. Uh... I, I, I agree as well. Uh, the NEC doesn't have as a big of a platform as the NBA, but I do believe like when we are putting these messages out, like it shouldn't be like during, you know, Black History Month or just a certain time period. Like if you're going to do it and support uh, support something, I think it should be consistent and it shouldn't just be uh, more of when something is trending or something, you know, something like that. I would say it starts with being courageous too and bold. Um, when I think about that time in the, in the bubble and the wobble where the WNBA teams uh, boycott their game, where the Atlanta Dream wore the t-shirts uh, in support of Governor Warnock in, um, in, a, in Atlanta and Georgia. I also think it's important to uh, capture people's attention because if we're moving in, a, in our rat race, individually, we're not thinking about the bigger picture. So when they stopped, when they refused to play, it made everyone take a pause and rethink and reevaluate. What matters more? Are we just gonna be concerned about money and being rich? Or are we gonna be concerned about care for people? So I think at our level, maybe there are some things we can adopt where we could make the, the, the culture, or we can make the community stop, rethink and reevaluate and make sure we're always putting the players first or the safety of the coaches first and also uh, racial justice and, and equality first. All of those were incredible answers, very powerful. Um, I agree uh, with Drea saying that we can definitely be more consistent um, and not just uh, wait for one month out of the year to um, show our support and appreciation for um, our coaches and our uh, student athletes. So uh, I agree with a lot of everything that you guys said. Um, my final question uh, is one that I'm sure that we can all talk about for hours, but it's about the cultural uh, significance of hoops to our communities. Um, we are shooting this uh, the day after the All-Star Game and just watching all of that literal Black history from the 70s to uh, Kareem to all the way to, you know, Steph and Braun, um, just all in the same room was just amazing to see. And that was truly like a moment. So my question to this group is, why do you think this game is such an absolute cornerstone of our culture? Like what makes it stick for so long? I think it's it's uh, it's in our community. It, it's it's one of the games you can play. You can play by yourself. You don't need a lot. You got you need a basketball and a hoop. You can play. You know, with a, you've seen people play with a garbage can and uh, and some boxes or whatever. So it's easy to play. You can play with a by yourself. You can play with a group. And it kind of draws everybody in. Everybody's so connected. And, it, and another part of it is like, like, like Kareem. We keep going to use the Kareem, but Kareem with the sky hook. It's art, and we're an artsy community. Like you know, George Gervin, the smooth finger roll, and you know, LeBron and Jordan. It's art. It's art, and we're like I said, we're an artsy community. So it, we're drawn to this game. It's a, it's an inner city. It's an urban game, and we that's where we come from. So I think it's gone, it's grown like, you know, you look at the All-Star game and you look at the amount of foreign guys and some of the NBA uh, uh, MVP candidates are a lot, of, a lot of foreign guys. The game has grown so much and it starts with our community and it's just expanded out and gotten bigger and bigger as, as time has gone on. So uh, it's a huge, huge part of who we are as a people, as a culture. And I and I go back to like the 
the, the the art and this and and, our, and how we grew up. So I think that's where it comes from, and uh, we've taken it to such a high level. Like you know, you, I, I was just before we got on, I was looking at the uh, Jordan and Magic thing on Instagram from last night, and I was cracking up. I, I'm a big. I'm I'm one of the few people who think Magic is the goat. So I love that whole wow. last night. Controversial opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's good. So it's, it's who we are as a as a community. Uh yeah, definitely agree. Um, I think for me, like I think it sticks so much because uh, I grew up in an urban area, and it get it, to me it was like a sense of hope. You know, if I keep working hard, keep shooting the gym, like in the long run it'll pay off. And I think, you know it gives a lot of people a sense of hope, a sense of urgency. And uh, just being around basketball is not like, for for the overall picture, it's not about basketball. I think uh, it's creating the bonds, creating the friendships, creating, you know, it's more than basketball. It's lifetime friendships. And uh, so I think it's, it's, it's that, being competitive, you know, as uh, Coach Teller says, it, it is in our, you know, uh, community. And sports overall is in our community. And it, it's just, again, like that sense of hope, so. Hoops also gives all of us the ability to be expressive. When you think about from the swag, like Coach Seller said, with the finger roll, to, to the hope and to your future, like Drea said, then you think about fashion with sneakers, uniform, shorts, how we wear everything. Um, and then how it's one of the few sports where bringing your entourage to the game makes sense. So like, and then even when you don't go pro like Coach Sellers did, like when you think about EBC at Rucker, it was started from record companies, guys that still love playing street ball. So they created their own teams and created a tournament. So like hoops is, is the way where you could tie all parts of your life in it and it just fits perfectly. It, it all makes sense. Um, so it's, it's everlasting in that way. Um, you can stay around it through fashion. You can stay around it through music. You can stay around it through through the future, through your children. Uh, today on um, Sports Center, they were uh, LeBron was talking about staying in the league long enough to play with his son, Bronny Jr. So like that's an amazing thing um, to consider, and um, and I think it shouldn't be understated. I think it really should be valued. Um, and it also too, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, it goes across genders. Women can play it, men can play it, and then we can play on each other's team too. All of those answers were right. <laughs> like, it's just such an expressive, beautiful sport, no matter the level, like NBA, NEC, whatever. It's just such an, it's such an avenue to express yourself creatively, uh, with your strength I think it's one of the most artistic ways that anyone can be able to express themselves which is through this sport all right that was an incredible and fun conversation uh thank you again to Pat Drea coach uh S Samara I appreciate you guys for um, offering your time to have a conversation to talk about these issues. This has been an NEC Now.